We're checking out the Geekom A8 again. It's similar but different. You know, I think it's pretty confusing for consumers when these mini PCs use the same model number. A light plus or something else like a letter would help to differentiate. The new A8 is pretty similar with the same core count and iGPU, but has lower clock speeds and is missing the Ryzen AI Engine MPU for AI specific tasks, which at this low level isn't worth the silicon it takes up in the first place. But like sex, AI sells apparently. With a cut down processor, you'd expect a lower price, and you'd be right. The new A8 is currently $519 US dollars on the official website, and there's a 10% off coupon dropping it down to $467 USD. For Aussies, that'll be 719 AUD after the coupon. With 32GB of RAM and 1TB storage, this is one of the more price competitive products Geekom has released in recent memory. Geekom consistently includes compact power supplies in its lineup of mini PCs, and this makes me happy. It's 19 volt, 120 watts, and there's also a VESA mount and HDMI cable. On the front of the mini you have dual USB Type-A 10 gigabit, with the one on the left supporting faster charging. There's also a 3.5mm audio jack and power button. Geekom has included a Wi-Fi 6E chip for wireless and Bluetooth. On the side of the mini is an SD card slot, which is very rare these days, and much appreciated for those using their mini for photo and video editing. The back has USB 4 40 gigabit supporting data and display only, dual HDMI 2.1, a 2.5 gigabit LAN jack, USB Type A 10 gigabit, USB 2, a USB C 10 gigabit also supporting data and display, but again, isn't able to power the mini, so you're forced to use the included power supply. Opening the A8 is a pain in the ass. You'll find glued on rubber feet inserts covering the screws. Once you do finally get them all out, there's nothing to grab onto when trying to remove the lid. A screwdriver in the screw hole worked for me to pop it open. The metal cooling plate is for the SSD and has another four screws to remove. Make sure to dislodge the wireless cable before removing the plate as there's little slack. Only one 2280 M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slot is available for storage which is occupied by a Lexa Gen 4 SSD. The WAD posit RAM is DDR5 5600, but has no cooling, and the M.2 wireless card is found under the SSD. Windows 11 Pro is included, and the malware scan came back clean. My Ubuntu test worked fine without any issues. It's benchmark time again. The Geekom A8 8745HS performs fine in single core Cinebench. There's around a 1% difference between the best and worst score. In multi-core, out of the box performance is the lowest we've seen so far. The best score is 11% ahead. However, there is a performance mode in the BIOS that increases the power limit, and that brings down the lead for the Ace Magic W1 to 7.5%. Geekbench single core is similar to the competition. Moving on to multi-core, Performance out of the box is good, while increasing the power limit adds very little. A short H.264 video encoding test is up next, and the Geekom A8 has the lowest result by a few seconds. So let's see how the same file encoded to AV1 with a higher resolution performs. Better actually, it beats a couple of the other minis. The final encoding test is offloading the toughest parts to the integrated graphics, and here the Geekom A8 performed well. Even though this chip doesn't have the dedicated Ryzen AI engine, it can still perform AI tasks using the CPU. The result is similar performance to other minis with directly comparable CPUs. The same AI workload on the iGPU shows the Geekom A8 to be a strong performer, and that usually means good things for the graphics tests. That is the case here, with a Geekom A8 performing exactly as it should. Nothing strange in Firestrike, Time Spy, or Steel Nomad Lite. Since we've covered this iGPU more than any other, instead of showing the same games over and over, here's a new one. And it doesn't look pretty at 1080p low with plenty of shimmering and aliasing. Anyway, the frame rate holds above 30fps, so the settings could be tweaked with FSR to make it look a bit nicer. You'll be looking at similar frame rates at 1080p low for older AAA games natively without upscaling. Some newer ones run poorly, 
even with FSR. A native resolution, most of the Wii U, Xbox 360 and PS3 library is playable and for many games you can go up to 1080p no problem. The 40 gigabit USB 4 port allows for further expansion possibilities. I'm testing an eGPU with an RTX 4070 Super for extra gaming performance. Since this Mini has no active cooling for the RAM, I wanted to try a longer gaming test. I left it for over an hour at 25C ambient and the frame rate held up okay, dropping just one on average. The worst result was the RAM hitting a maximum of 78C on one stick, which isn't too far from thermal throttling territory. In the Linux kernel compile benchmark, the Geekom A8 is very ordinary. I expected a little better. Adobe Photoshop performance is great though, taking the second spot on the list, and Adobe Premiere also resulted in a high score. With a power limit increase, the A8 ended up near the top of the list. When we opened it earlier, we found a Lexa SSD inside, and it's a fast Gen 4 drive that takes a spot near the top of the chart. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a temperature sensor, so I can't show a result, but it didn't thermal throttle during the half hour SSD test with Cinebench running in the background, so it looks like that metal plate does a decent job in cooling it. Bluetooth range isn't very good, not Minix Mini PC broken level, but below average. Luckily, there were no problems with dropouts or latency using wireless at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Geekom's A8 has impressive idle power draw at just 7 watts from the wall when idle on the Windows desktop. The maximum while using the out of box settings is below 90 watts and with performance mode under 100, which is similar to what the other minis with this chip do as well. Maximum CPU temperature didn't go past 90C in balance mode or 92 in performance during my testing. Noise levels are above the norm which going by the data is 40 dBA. Performance mode only added a couple more, not a huge difference. As the title of this video states, this is the smallest 8745HS Mini we've looked at. If a tiny footprint is one of your most important metrics, then the Geekom A8 is the winner. Jumping into the BIOS is easy enough with a delete key on startup. Geekom Minis typically have few options available, and here's what we have. Power mode is where you can set the higher power limit. I spent some time reordering the checklist to make it closer in line with the flow of the reviews, and here it is. The Geekom A8 gets a tick for the metal case and build quality. The price is competitive. No bare bones option is available with this one unfortunately, and the lack of USB-C PD is a strange oversight. Future Geekom Minis need to be easier to open. Others do it much better. With its small size, I'm not surprised there's only one storage slot, but a second 2242 slot would have been ideal and has been used in Minis this size previously. The other checklist items all look good, but the lack of cooling for the RAM could be a problem during long periods under load and in hotter environments. Bluetooth range isn't terrible, but it is lacking. Load fan noise is higher than average. Geekom has stepped up its game with BIOS and driver updates since I last checked. Now there's a dedicated section. I don't see this A8 mentioned yet. It gets a tentative tick with the assumption that there will be a page added soon. There's no CMOS reset button accessible from the outside of the Mini, and Geekom includes a longer 3 year warranty over most of the competition. Overall, Geekom's A8 is pretty good and a unique mini PC compared to many others featuring the Ryzen 8745HS. It does lack some features, but my main concern is that there's no active cooling for the RAM. We have seen performance drops with Geekom and other minis that don't have cooling. On the positive side, we have the longer warranty and nice premium look. If you're interested in the A8, find the links in the video description. Anything purchased there really helps the channel out. The last Geekom Mini PC we checked out was the IT15 a few months ago with Intel's flagship mobile processor. You can check out that review right here. Cheers!